reassessed. That's the question. So that's good. That's the question. I understand it's a great show we have. Today. It's a good one. Have you ever heard of Kid Creole and the Coconuts? What is that? What is that? Who are they? <laughs> in fact, you probably never heard of them because they've been more popular in Europe than here. But all of that is changing now. In fact, Kid Creole and the Coconuts are hot on the American scene, and their special brand of music is making its mark. I think the thing that has saved us, that it, that has not uh, uh, made us into one of these vapid, uh, immediately vanishing bands, is the fact that it's very difficult for us to compromise certain things. All of us do compromise, but to compromise to a degree. But by not compromising too much, we've maintained a certain level of quality. Most of the characters that we write about uh, are inspired by real people. Uh, the Endicott uh, character, for instance, was a uh, friend of mine in high school. He was just a, a, he was a perfect human being. And my wife was constantly saying to me, why can't you be like, his name was Joel, it wasn't Endicott, of course. And uh, after a while, I kept hearing that so much, I said, I've got to put this into a song. We're still a cult band because we've never achieved that number one or top ten record in America. It seems that we've been getting more offers in America since I released uh, my management company. And I don't know if it's... You uh, know, you're right. It's true, right? You're right. I think it perhaps is, is a coincidence, but um, it's I think... It's no coincidence. I think what it is that uh, Cody Mooney and I have taken the uh, managerial tasks in hand ourselves and we're, we're self-managed now. And a lot, of, a lot of people say, of course, that's Talented suicide, world. you know, for artists to manage their own careers, and perhaps it is. Perhaps we'll suffer years from now, but right now we're having a darn good time, aren't we? That's right. We do everything like the managers do. We have a directory here. We have the days. I write the things in here. I got a phone book. I make my calls. I have plenty of pens in here. And we don't have to give 15% to anyone. Yeah. The fact that our music defies categorization has been a blessing for us overseas and a curse for us here in America. You go into record stores and you find the Kid Krill albums in the strangest bins. You may find them in a reggae bin. You may find them... The other them. day I was in this record shop and there was a question mark on it. And that was the only album that was ours, man. Kid Curl album, man. They made a whole new categorization. Exactly. This is my point. So I think that until either we change and we try to fit it more neatly into one category, or we wait until America changes. Now, of course, if you notice, my hair is turning a little gray. And I don't think we have that much time left to uh, wait for America to come around to us. So we'll, we'll just try our best to try and make the music without losing much of the integrity, a little more categorical. But the gray looks good on you. It matches your suit.